Well, that Peng Shui t-shirt saga at the tennis on the weekend, that's just the latest example of how the police force in Victoria has become politicised. Have a look. Yeah. I understand so what you, yes. I understand what you're saying. Um, however, Tennis Australia does set the rules, and regardless, regardless of what you're saying, and I'm not, I'm not saying you can't have those views, but I am saying that Tennis Australia sets the rules here. So now we've talked about that saga to death. I'm not interested in going over that. I'm interested in why Victoria Police would allow their officers to be involved in that lunacy. That is beyond me. Uh, to many, it's just a, another sign of the police losing their independence. Joining me now to discuss this is former Victorian Police Chief Commissioner Kel Glare. Kel, we've really seen attitudes towards police change during the pandemic, and I don't think this latest incident at the tennis helps Victoria Police's reputation. Certainly things have changed. There's no doubt that police were required to do things that they probably didn't want to do and uh, that didn't go over well with a lot of the public. But so far as this episode with Tennis Australia is concerned, there was no uh, way in which police should have been involved in any way, shape or form, mm. unless, of course, there was fear of a breach of the peace or there was an actual assault. But it wasn't a matter for police to uh, be involved in that at all. Absolutely, and, and and I think that was the the footage that caused so much damage to Australia's reputation because it wasn't just a security guard. There was someone in a Victoria Police uniform telling this uh, this uh, protester that they can't be wearing that T-shirt. Now, we're seeing this a lot with Victoria Police seeming to become politicised. It's not uncommon to hear assistant police commissioners regurgitating Dan Andrews' talking points. They seem to be very heavily intertwined. Uh, that's not how the system's supposed to work, Kel. Right, the, the Police Act of 2013 gives the Minister power to set policy and direct police in relation to policy. But uh, subsection 10, uh, sorry, section 10, subsection 2C specifically forbids the Minister to give any directions in relation to investigations or the laying of charges. Now, we see repeatedly instances of people committing criminal offences and Victoria Police not bringing any charges. Now, they don't need permission to do that. As a, as a working detective, as a, as a senior constable, uh, I laid many, many charges, criminal charges, and later on throughout my career, they don't need any permission to lay charges. It is the duty of police where there's a criminal act and there's a prima facie case to lay the charge Put it before the court, let the court decide the guilt or innocence. And increasingly, um, as I've said, we've seen instance after instance, uh, we had uh, the red shirts wrought, uh, clearly criminal mm. in my view, and uh, I've had a bit of experience in the criminal field. We've had a guy sh having his dog chauffeured around in a government car. Now, if that's not misconduct in public office, I've never seen it. We've had a couple of politicians rorting their uh, living away from home allowance, and oh, they paid the money back. No criminal charges, not misconduct in public office again or any of the other offences that could have applied. We've had the fiasco with I Cook Foods again. Uh, I have seen evidence myself of two counts of perjury, an attempt to pervert the course of justice. I've examined that evidence. It's crystal clear. The evidence is captured on videotape. And now we find that Victoria Police is saying they're not going to prosecute anyone. Now, the only explanation I can see for that is that they are being unduly influenced by the government of the day and, and that should not be permitted to happen. Operational policing must well, be totally independent of government. It must be, as they say, without fear or favour, malice or real will. Now, on the Sluggate affair, as it's often called, um, it's case involving a claim a slug was planted by a council to sabotage a business. Uh, no criminal charges have been laid at this stage, but I, I Cook Foods, uh, the business that was impacted, is pursuing a civil action against the state government and the city of Greater Dandenong over their closure. Um, one of Australia's top lawyers, Robert Richter QC, he'll be uh, leading that. Well, what can we expect to see here, Kel? And do you believe the police uh, adequately 
investigated this incident the first time around? Well, if you look at it, as I understand it, the first two investigators were doing a good job. But the case was taken away from them, and I know for a fact it's been moved at least five times. Now, there's no explanation as to why it should have been taken off perfectly competent investigators who were making headway. The only explanation of having it moved around uh, so often must be that someone didn't want all the facts to be determined. Now, I just I don't understand how Victoria Police can operate in that way. If the uh, investigators in the initial case were incompetent, that's another matter. But my understanding is they were doing a very good job. And to have the case moved five times and then end up with the final investigator saying he submitted a report. Well, police don't need to submit reports when they see the commission of clearly of criminal offences. They need to lay charges. They don't need second opinions. Uh, God knows uh, I've authorised and laid you know, probably thousands of charges over the 35 years I had in Victoria Police. You don't, as a member of the police force, need to consult a higher authority on every occasion. So what's going on is difficult for me to fathom and I don't like it, frankly. I think that there is undue influence being exerted on the Victoria Police. I know it's hard for them to resist, but they need to resist at every, at every turn. There must be independence of, of police operations. There must be that separation of powers between government and police and from my perspective, that's just not happening.